Hi, I'm Michael Pfeiffer from Industrial Metallurgists. This video is a complement to our strength and toughness um, article. So in this article, the, the trade-off between strength and toughness are explained. So there's a lot of confusion about the differences between strength and toughness. In this case, toughness is with reference to a material's fracture toughness. That is, its ability to withstand a fracturing when there is a crack in the material or when there is a, a notch in the, in the material that acts as a stress concentration. And when the material is exposed, uh, if, the, if the material with a, with a certain size crack or with a notch that's large enough or in stress concentration that's large enough, if the material's fracture toughness is not large enough, then the material can crack when it's exposed to a certain, certain load. So there's often um, a trade-off between having material that's high strength and also material that has high toughness. And for a, any particular alloy it, with a spe specific heat treatment um, or um, condition, there will be a trade-off between the strength and toughness. That is, as we increase the strength, there will be a reduction in the toughness. It has a reduction in the ability of the material to with, uh, with a certain size crack or stress concentration to be able to, um, uh, to not fracture when it's exposed to a certain overload or a certain load. And conversely, when the strength is lower, then the material has, has higher toughness. So there will be a trade-off between the two. And it's important for designers to understand the difference between the two and how to manage that trade-off in order to design components that will be able to withstand um, exposure to the use conditions, both to the loading condition, the, 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 the having the strength to be able to keep from yielding during use, as well as having the toughness necessary to be able to withstand cracking when there's a crack and um, avoid fracturing when there's a crack in the sample or when there's a severe stress concentration in the sample. Um, so with strength, we're focused, people, we have yield strength and tensile strength. Really the important strength consideration is yield strength because we want to select materials that do not yield under during, during use. Um, so as a metal's yield strength increases, the amount of stress the metal can support without deforming increases. Um, and as a metal's fracture toughness increases, the energy required to cause a crack to grow to fracture increases. So higher energy is required to cause that, to cause either a fracturing or uh, with, a, with, a, with a crack of a certain size or with a stress concentration in the metal. So for a component with a crack of a certain length, as the fracture toughness decreases, then there's a decrease in the component's ability to support the load without fracturing. And the same thing occurs with the stress concentration. If there's a stress concentration in, in, the, in the component, then as the fracture toughness decreases, then the amount of energy that can be, that can be absorbed for the material, for the component fractures decreases. So people often think that they're going to make a part stronger that it will be better, but that's not always the case as seen in the graph and showing the trade-off between toughness and strength. If you make a part stronger using the same alloy and the same processing, then it will make the it will result in reduction in toughness and the reduction in the ability to um, not fracture with a some sort of stress concentration or crack in the in the sample or in the metal. And the way to get both better to get improved strength and toughness toughness at the same time is to go to perhaps a different alloy or a different heat treatment. So alloy one, for example, maybe that's hot rolled steel, and a change would be the going from hot rolled steel to going to steel that's been quenched and tempered and that would move the the metal in the direction of the arrow going having enabling increased strength and increased toughness or you can go to a different steel alloy altogether and that would also that could enable increased strength and increased toughness so for a particular application if increased strength and toughness is required then it's important to either look at changing the alloy or changing the method of strengthening the material in order to get both increased strength and toughness. Um, lastly, um, uh, I, I worked on a project where the, the engineers had designed the, the material out of 17.4 pH stainless steel, and they selected the highest strength um, heat treatment for that material resulting in high strength, but also very poor fracture toughness. And during the manufacturing process, the parts were being, a notch was being made in the sample, and this was uh, um, and then the part was being heat treated. And what was happening is that after heat treatment, the parts were cracking at the notch, 
without with, with barely any load being put on the sample because the material had such poor fracture toughness. And so what the, the decision was made was to reduce the strength of the material and still having enough strength for the application and getting better fracture toughness. And it's still a similar heat treatment was, well, the, the heat treatment was modified a little bit, but it was still a similar heat treatment, but it was modified to result in reduced strength and improved fracture toughness. And that ended up solving the problem. So in, in many situations, um, it's not always necessary to increase the strength of a component in order to prevent fracturings. Sometimes it's necessary to reduce the strength a little bit and uh, in order to increase the toughness. So thinking about that is important when, when, when designing components. Um, if you wanna learn more, there's, uh, there's a, a number of different article, um, uh, references that are shown on the, on the article. And if you're interested in learning even more about metallurgy, then I recommend you look at our metallurgy training pages. We have lots of metallurgy courses that are designed for non-metallurgists um, that will help people better understand the metals that they're working with. And we have both online courses as well as videos of previous webinars. Um, and that's shown on our on metallurgy, videos of a past metallurgy webinars page. And if you look through our website, there are different pages that have different coupons for getting discounts on courses and videos. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching and good luck with your medals. Bye.